to standard YouTube intro. Hey guys, what's up? This is Brian. Brian's Mobile One. We got Spanky's car, we're gonna do the synchros on it. Because the warranty expired at 60,000 miles. No, they couldn't reproduce it, and so they wouldn't fix it. Now it had gotten worse where it would grind into more. From my understanding, uh, it was the synchros weren't meshing up right, and that's what was causing the problem. Instead of having them just grind until they finally come together, what it does is it just causes them to be moving at the same pace. So you got movement on this side, the synchro takes that movement and then translates it into the other one and gets it moving at the same speed. And as you continue to press it, these line up, you see how they all correspond and get them to move together. So when you move your shifter from one gear to the next, it doesn't go click and uh, you don't have to rev match or do any weird stuff like you have to do in a Model T. And uh, that's all thanks to these guys, the synchros. All right, Spanx, let's lick this problem. Close enough. So the best way to do the synchros is to just lay everything out in order. So basically these bearings were the last thing off and then this and then you see this has a sloped cone type face so the next thing to go on would be the synchro and then after that is a splined cog and the splined cog is pressed on. A lot of it is somewhat intuitive but this just makes it so that it's simple so you don't have to think as much. So this is where the clutch is so this would be the uh, input shaft of the transmission. And then this is the output shaft. This gear here actually engages directly with the ring gear, the outer part of it. So it's just the same way. You've got all of these different things that uh, go in a certain order onto this. It drives the differential and out to the axles. You don't have a propeller shaft uh, necessarily with this type of transmission because it's front wheel drive. It's a transaxle. It's got the differential and everything with it. So this one gathers power from the input shaft and runs it to the differential. The way that this one goes together, uh, the bearing goes on first and then followed by first gear and then you've got a synchro that's basically three different parts. It's got kind of like a bearing race in the middle of it. These face up and this goes on. If you look at the bottom side of it, it's got three little divided oval pill shaped things or bean shaped things that go over the top of these and then this is clipped on and then this is the slider it just kind of goes over everything else so this is the driven shaft in a lot of manual transmission it'd be the idler shaft and then it would transfer power to a drive shaft like a propeller shaft with u-joints and everything but this one interfaces directly with the differential so this is a transaxle rather than just a regular old gearbox so the way this goes is you've got a bearing that goes on here and then first gear goes on and then you've got your uh, first to second synchro and then you've got a hub that has a slider on it and this is what your shift fork interfaces with and then on the other side of that you've got a synchro and instead of having a cone that it goes on like some of the other ones it's got a race that's in the middle of it it's kind of a little different animal and then you've got some clips another bearing and then you've got your second gear cog and then uh, third gear, is that third gear or is that just power transfer and a spacer? Anyway, this is the order that it all goes on. Here's an example of an old synchro. And then we'll compare that with the new one right here. And you can't really tell a whole lot because most of the wear happens in between. It happens on the face of this race. You see where the scoring is just a little bit. Just some light wear. This wasn't the worst example in this case. But basically these sit flatter to where that race is actually sticking up a teeny bit. I don't know if you can see that. Well, when you look at the new one, it's sticking up a tiny bit. It looks the same. So there you go. That's why you use feeler gauges and not your eyeballs. I've got a little key that I made for doing crankshaft pulleys. This is an old harmonic balancer. You can see where I've cut it with a plasma cutter and put a socket on it. And that's hollow and deep enough and big enough that I can drive that on over the shaft. So we're just pressing everything down. Can I get both with that? No, I can't. So I'm gonna go this way. Just kind of like a pressed sandwich. Everything's at least keyed up. That's it. I want to let up. I should be able to see a place for a clip to go. 
and there's the place for a clip to go. That's locked up. That's locked up. Now it's free. It kind of binds down because there's not a lot of oil in it. I think when we first drive this, it's going to give us some crappy results, and then with oil flow, it'll correct. So as you're putting these together, you got to remember that this is a brass bronze alloy. When you do it, you got to make sure that things are lined up because this has to go on to the splines. You see it stopping there and then the press takes it from there. Well, this is sitting down here and has to be keyed up with this. So as you approach, as this is in the wrong position, if it's in the wrong position, you can destroy it. So you got to line this mark up here with this. So if you were to press it on in this position, you just pretty much destroy it and it wouldn't go on. It just damage everything. It has to key up like this. And that way these slot into there, see them hit, and then this slots into here. So you got to watch that as you're pressing it down because they're apart to start and it can move freely. But as you get closer, you just need to make sure that they do that. Alright, so this is a tool that's made for doing stuff with crankshafts. It's an old harmonic balancer that I've cut. This is a piece of pipe from my fence project that I cut square. It just lines up and works out instead of buying expensive press tools. I've got the synchro all lined up to where I can just drop straight down on it. Bottom out just in time before things get close. So you do want to bottom it out so that you have the tolerances that make the synchros work good. You don't want to crush a cake stuff. Crush a cake, murder cake, bust a cake, those kind of things. Man, look at that. That Jerry rigged or what? Jerry rig everything. <laughs> it's a shout out to my buddy Zach. All right, well we're set up to where we can put the clip in on it and get on with the next part. So I went to do this one and this is all the way up. It wouldn't fit. I'd have to drop it down. That's not convenient. I tried a bunch of others. It wouldn't work. And then I do an inch and an eighth socket. Perfect. And that's the trick to doing these is just finding the right way to drive them on. This one I tested it, I took the bearing off and I put the socket on until it got all the way bottomed out. That's another thing you got to watch out for because if that happens you can mar up these splines and you won't be able to get your job done. Throw the socket on. There's a little bit of oil, just a film of oil on everything and that's why this is going so smoothly. When you engage it this way, this one's locked up and this one's freewheeling. <laughs> Crap. <laughs> At least the dogs all stayed in. I'm going to take this opportunity to show you how to get the uh, shift dogs in. First thing you do is look at the collar and see which one's got little detents in it. In this case it's this one here. So that's got to line up with the shift dog. You just let it sit on your hand like that so it could slide through if it wanted to. And you just push in on the little button, the little circle part, and then push the next one, and the next. And once you get it ramped onto each of these, it just goes like that. And you don't know which one it's going to be and exactly how and whatnot, so you just kind of keep a little pressure on it. So the range of motion of this is only so far. If I have my hand here, then it'll help to hold it. So when it's in this position, this gear's locked up and this one spins. And when you go this way, this one's locked up and this one spins. So the gears are in constant mesh with each other. Uh, but just what locks them up is just the position of the collar. And that's what you're literally doing with your shifter is you're just mo moving these collars to go from one gear to the next. And this is neutral when you're in the middle. Subscribe. Pretty cool. So this is the differential here. <clears throat> to get it out, it's easy to just put your finger in and just squeeze right here and lift. So these are your carrier bearings. This little guy here runs the speedometer for most vehicles, but not this one. These are your spider gears in the middle. Uh, as far as a pinion gear, normally you would have a pinion gear, but you don't with this one. You basically have a ring gear. You've got your spider gears that give you your differential or whatever, so you can spin at different rates. Normally you'd have a pinion gear that engages the ring gear coming in this way, but this it just engages it to the side. 
kind of interesting. So instead of being a normal gearbox or just a transmission, makes it a transaxle. So this works like an axle too. Your CV axles actually get together and meet each other inside these. So we've got two different stacks of gears here. We've got this one and this one. And this is the gear that interfaces with the differential. You can tell because it's got this great big gear here for first gear. So as I go to stick this in, I kind of twist it. So the gear that engages it is a really small gear. And then uh, the ones that it'll be spinning. I mean, it's kind of like a 10 speed, but without a chain, they just mesh with each other all the time. And then like we showed earlier, uh, your little slide here causes it to be in one gear or the other gear. And then the other one's just coasting. It's still engaged, it's still spinning, but it's coasting. Raise this up just enough to do the chores around the house. Just kidding. Raising kids. It's a bad joke. So these are the shift forks on a Toyota transmission. You'll notice that one of the forks goes through the two other ones. So this fork right here, the shaft, goes through both of them. I ran into a headache uh, of these two ball bearings. There's always some little thing on a job where it's just like, where the crap does this go? Where did it come from? Well, that's what happened with this. We couldn't figure out where these went. Let me tell you about it. So there's two little ball bearings that are inside this, uh, and it's kind of screwy. So the only reason this one's in there at play is just to show that it goes through it. You can see the hole there. So when you look closely, you'll see there's a little ball bearing there, and then there's another one that's behind it. You see how it drops down? There's a little indentation or detent or whatever you want to call it. It corresponds with this one here. So you can get down into it like that. And then when the detents are lined up, it, it basically it's a block to cause one to not twist when the other one does. I don't know if it's to keep you from hitting two gears at once or what. It's something to, along those lines. Okay, this one goes on this side. You can see there's a flat spot on those and that's just so that when you're putting it together you can tell if they're lined up to come apart. So you can see that detent that's about where my wrist is in the middle of my wrist. So if that's in there, I think that these would be the same. And then I turn this, that makes those balls come out. And now that's locked in place. So that's what those two little balls are for. So if you don't know that, um, you line these up to where they're together the same. And this will come off. And if you're just pulling things out, guess what's going to happen? These will go flying. We lost one across the floor and didn't know where to put them until we found them on this parts diagram. And from there, we still just couldn't figure out how these are supposed to go in here. We're like trying to load them in around the side or have them sit next to each other. But that's not the case at all. They just go into here. So to put them in there, you can see there's a hole where you can drop it in from above. So you line it up over the detent, which is basically against that uh, ring there. What you can do, if you're smart, is put your fingers on each side of it, and they'll drop right in, and you won't lose them anywhere. You don't have to have faith in physics or whatever. So as you look at that, you can see how it sticks out and holds it, and it drops down when the detent passes over it. So it, if this is in any position but here, it'll lock it so that the other shaft can't move. So now the real question is, can you drop the whole assembly in in one go? You want to be real careful with the input shaft that it gets a nice straight shot and you don't tear up the deal. Alexa, stop. Don't tell my Alexa what to do. Let's do this. bolt the thing down. You gotta keep an eye on me. It's a problem I'm on the opposite side. All those shoes. Yeah, yeah we'd bet everything been fine, but there'd be no reverse. We'd notice because we see like there's nothing there. Going real deep. You just need to make sure that that faces generally and then you can catch it with the bolt. The bolt for this incidentally has a little uh, tit on it so that you can guide it in. Double check my fork on this, even though I know I just barely did it. That's all, that's good. How about some reverse? We didn't 
put a magnet in either. Get all these lucky extra chances. I'm glad that we didn't hit the silicone yet. That's what happens when you have so much happening in your life between teardown and assembly. And your phone's ringing. So the magnet goes in here and gravity just holds it in place. It's time to do these gears here. These are a little on the tricky side. You don't have a lot of threads to start with here, which sucks. You want to make sure you get a gear mesh. Get this to walk. Get it walking a little bit, you'll be able to get it started. This one's threaded on the inside. It's M10 by 1.5. So the thing you got to watch out for here is you have these indents right here in the synchro and those need to align with your shift dogs. So you can look at the shift dogs, line it up like a sight, and get it so that they match. And you can either bring the synchro to the shift dog, or you can, yeah, I pretty much have to bring the synchro to the shift dog. Anyway, take a big nut and stick it in the middle there. Screw through it. I need a longer bolt or a shorter nut, don't I? if I just did that. Anyway, you just press it on using that and grab the other gear to kind of brace it up. You can take a pick and feel how far down that's threaded or not threaded. It's threaded down to about right there. So you want to make sure that you fill it with a nut or something thick so that you don't strip your threads out thinking that you're pressing and it's getting harder. Please don't smash my finger. Looks like I'm recklessly abandoning the synchro, no, but that's only because I'm recklessly abandoning the synchro. I'm just so happy that it's going. I'm gonna go about half inch at a time. Transmissions is tricky. Trick missions. Need to add more stuff. Okay, so we're bottomed out now. How do we push it past that? Bigger nut. Sleep Depp got the camera on that one. Sorry, okay. Gosh. So here's something fun. You can grab the little weight on this that gives you that satisfying feel when you shift. That's what this does. So it's like bam bam, you know, you're banging gears. Otherwise it would feel really lightweight with this. So anyway, go back side to side. You know, you've got first, second. To have it be in the middle, you got third, fourth. Come this way, you go reverse, and then come out again, go fifth. But you can do the same thing with these. One of them controls forward and backward motion. The other one controls side to side. So that would be your third and fourth. This would be your fifth gear. Come back out. This would be your reverse. Make it go this way, and you got your first and second. Each one just controls one uh, plane of motion. And then, of course, these have cables and then you have a translating effect from your shifter. So we've got the car all back together. If you look underneath, you can see it has a transmission. Uh, oil, CD axles, we've just got a couple final touches. Uh, Spanky's gonna get the, this is like the cornerstone on something. This is like the, the crowning thing. So just gotta ding the CD axle nuts. So hit the first one good and then, we'll, and then wait. Oh, you're anticipating recoil. I know. There you go. Again, very good. So we got a final touch of this. Whenever I do these, I just get this nice and steady. Anyway, one good hard hit is worth 50 uh, swing and misses. Let's try to get the hammer really square to the chisel. That is not an easy one, but that'll work. We'll take that to the bank. So most of you guys, this is just review, but whenever you put lug nuts on, what I do is I'll put the bottom one on first because the bottom kicks out like that. So just, just kind of sink it in a little bit. And then that way when you go to do the rest of them, they'll spin on real clean and you'll have a good start. You can see these sink into the rim a little bit. They got the washers. So having it centered is a big benefit. If you tighten the first one really hard, then you're kind of in trouble getting the other ones on. It has to kind of smear to get where it needs to be. Throw it on the 
have a camera down. And we're going to add torques these down to 95 foot pounds. There you go. You gotta use your body weight, girls. Star formation. I'm gonna check that one like three times. Cool. So Let's get the other side too, because that one was done up in the air. It's not down yet. test it out so here we have the old and busted synchros here's the new hotness very nice well, hello you excited <laughs> I am excited how long have you been putting this one off oh um when did it start it? When you first bought it, it was making noise? Within the first year. So go ahead and fire it up. You're so tall. I do my best. Wow. Boy, it's got to turn the light off on those and then turn it back on just to get you blurry. All right, so let's look at the odometer. We're at 99996. And the temperature gauge is just buried into the cold. Let's try it out. Let's get this uh, second to third shift. Seatbelts, everyone. Should we do this? Yep. Second to third. Isn't that oh, nice? Yeah. You weren't that even. <laughs> second to third, and we're good. We'll do another one. No, no edits, no takes. Just so, uh, it's nice it's now, huh? Oh, sorry. Yeah. I have to get her used to There's it. second, here comes third. Perfect. What do you think? Awesome. Did you think your transmission was ever going to work again after we took it apart? <laughs> I was getting kind of worried. <laughs> I knew it again. With, with those, <laughs> with those sure two balls, it was like, man, where do these things go? Hooray for parts. Exploded diagrams. No kidding. So we had these two little ball bearings that go right here fall out when we pulled the shift forks up. So we had to do an exploded diagram because I had no idea where they came from. Um, going forward, I'd know to look there now, but holy crap, that's a little bit of a scare. Because you know they wouldn't be there if they weren't needed. I don't hear anything. It's like perfect. <laughs> it's so smooth. <sighs> Silky. It should have been like this new Toyota. Yeah, no kidding, huh? It was not. It never, it didn't shift this nice new. Not at all. You're welcome. Thank you, Ray. <laughs> awesome. There we go, 100,000 miles. That's a lot of zeros. So you're 100,000 miles and your car is driving as good as new? Better than new. Better than new. Can't be that. Much better than new. Sweet. Bonus footage at the end.
and make a meal.